Hello and welcome to the start of another series of tutorials where I will be showing you how to create graphs using only Python. What I will do is each part will be a new graph and I'll explain very clearly and in lots of detail how to create these many different types of graphs. And so hopefully, if you are a complete beginner, you'll be able to run through this tutorial, pause it if needed, rewind, watch it back, and then hopefully you'll be able to follow each step very easily. And by the end of it, you will know how to do some really awesome graphing with Python. And if you'd like these tutorials, please do comment below, please do subscribe to my channel and without further ado, let's get started with creating these line graphs. So the first one, line graphs. So the first thing you will need to do in all of these tutorials at the very top is import a module called matplotlib. And matplotlib is like the go-to module for creating graphs. And to be more specific, it's actually the pyplot part of the matplotlib module that you'll need. So what you will do is you need to type in import and then space matplotlib.pyplot and then I've given it an alias of plt so wherever we reference plt in the code we're calling matplotlib.pyplot and this is our main graphing module that we will be using for every one of the tutorials in this series and quite often with matplotlib.pyplot it goes well with another module called numpy and so we're just going to import that and use it as and when needed. So if we import numpy as well, which is sort of um, like mathematical sort of module, which enables you to sort of um, correct numbers, um, change numbers and square them and do all sorts of mathematical functions to these numbers. So it's a really useful module, especially when graphing. So if we import numpy as well, and I've typed in import numpy as np, and np is the alias we're giving numpy. So we've got two aliases. We've got plt for our graphing and numpy for any sort of um, transformation or changing of the numbers if we need to. Cool. So after we've imported those two modules, the first thing we can do is we can create two lists. And our first list is called x, which is our x value numbers, our numbers on the x axis, and our, or x, the x part of our number, and our y list, which is the y part of our sort of numbers that we're going to graph. So we're going to keep it very simple. We're going to have x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and y is also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so if you already have some knowledge of line graphs, you'll realize that this creates a straight line. And so the first thing we need to work out is how do we get this plotted onto a graph? So we've got our X values and we've got our Y values, both in separate lists. And we're going to come to these three lines in a second, but let's skip down to our line here, which is plt.plot. And plt.plot is the graphing function and within the plot function we can plot our x values together with our y values and we can arrange them to be a certain color have a certain marker type and also even specify the lines that we want the line style and so here we have plt.plot and then in brackets of plot we have x which is calling our x values up here we have our y which is calling our y values up here and after the comma, we have something called, in quotation marks, we have R, O, and a dash. And what that means is it goes color, 
marker shape and line style. So in this case, our value and our, our line is going to be red. Each point is going to be a circle and our line is going to be a straight line. So it's going to be red circle and the line style is going to be straight. And so what we can do now is we can show this graph and we can then run it and hopefully it will now show this graph. So you give it time to run and here we are. We have this graph here. So this is our straight line. See it's red. The markers are circles and the line style is straight line. And notice the points are 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5 with X as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and Y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How I showed that graph is I typed in plt.show and then had empty brackets. And that's a very useful function for then showing what you've plotted in graphs. And I'll keep coming back to this plt.show because that is what is used in the Python shell to show your graphs temporarily. It doesn't save them, it just shows them in your, uh, the graph that you have. So, okay, let's change this a bit. So instead of saying we want um, a straight dash, let's say we have sort of multiple dashes. And let's say instead of the red, we want blue. And so let's then sort of run this code again. And here we have sort of dashes instead. And we have our line is blue. And notice that we kept the dots of our marker line. And what you can do is you can have some really great fun with this by changing the line styles that you want, changing the colors and the marker shapes. And the great thing about matplotlib.pyplot is that it has some really great documentation. And there's lots of sort of forums where and sort of um, sites which can help you out. And there's lots of questions being asked about matplotlib with really great solutions. And so what I'll do is I'll put a link to the documentation below so then you can see all the various different colors and marker shapes and line styles that you can have. Okay, let's then put this back to red, get rid of the dashes, have it one straight line, and let's now go and edit this a bit. Let's make this a bit more presentable. So what we can do now is we can add some labels to the x-axis, an x-axis label, by typing in plt, referring to our graph, our plotted graph, dot x label, together, x label, and then in brackets of x label, we can specify uh, the label that we want, and then also the font size that we want. So in this case, is this gonna be called x-axis, and the font size will be 12, I think that's a pretty standard font size. And then what you will have is an X table appearing on the left, on the bottom of the graph below your numbers. And we can do exactly the same thing with the Y axis as well by typing in PLT, calling our graph. And instead of X label, we have Y label. And instead of X axis, we have Y axis. And then we can have the same font size by typing in comma font size equals 12. And then when we run it using our PL, and then we make sure PLT show is, is shown and not sort of hashed out, we can then run it and we should have the labels appearing. Here we go. The labels on the x-axis and y-axis have appeared. And we can go one step further by introducing grid lines into our, pay, into our graph. And we can do that by typing in plt.grid, then in brackets type in true with a capital T, capital T for true, remember that? And then we can run it again and you will see the grid lines have appeared like that. So all of a sudden we're editing our graph. Awesome. So now we have a really good looking graph. Okay. So what if now, Instead of having 
specific values of x. We just want to have x as a range of values. So here is where we're going to call our numpy module, taking it up one level of difficulty. So if we type in np, call it our numpy module, dot a range, then in brackets we specify uh, an x, a minimum range and then a maximum range and then the step count. So in this case, every one value we move along. So minus 100, then minus 99, then minus 98, and so on and so forth, all the way to plus 100. We can then have a sort of graph that is plotted with this as the range. And so we've changed our x values. And also what we can do is because we've changed our x values, we can also change our y values to be y equals this x value squared. So squared is the squared function is two asterisks. So we type in x asterisk asterisk two, we can say y equals x squared, where x is our range between minus 100 and plus 100. And we can plot that in exactly the same way before, still keep our x and y labels, still keep the grid, and we can now show it. So we run it. Here we have our range here sorted. Every one step. So there's a lots of dots here because we've gone every one step. And we've got a nice sort of x squared graph shape going on. And we can add another line. We can add a th an extra line if you wanted to. So we could say that is y1. This is y2, and we can plot, say, instead of having plot x, y, we can say plot x, y, 1, and have it as red, circle marker, straight line. We can plot it as having what x underscore y2 as blue circle marker and straight line, and we can plot them with each other like this. Now, because it's, it's gone a bit weird, but you can plot both lines against each other. Like so. And then we can also get rid of um, a line if you want by just sort of leaving it out or deleting that line entirely. And we can put, say, instead of y1, we can have y2 with the red lines. We can have it like this and running and that is our graph. So if you wanted to add an extra line, all you had to do was just give it a separate name and have an extra line with the plot. And then it will run, it'll run both lines together. So let me show you a better example than the one we had earlier. If we go back to our first example, and instead of having one, two, three, four, five, we're going to have y1 and y2 again, and we're going to have 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And then we're going to have plot x, y1. The exact same before because the previous example was didn't show it that well. And instead of having a red circle, we can have blue. Just to show, you can have red as well, but we can run this now. And you have two different lines showing with the grids. And there you go. And you can just keep going with different lines. You can have different colors if you want, or same colors, or different line style. So you can have a different line style with this. And you just keep playing around with it um, just to get to know it and stuff like that. Cool. So the final thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to save your file. How we do that is we can firstly import a module called the OS module, which is a very good sort of file. It's a module that you can go into your own file directories and things like that. And we're going to use the OS module to check where this file is reading from. And so if we type in print os.getcwd, get the current working directory, we can now see where, where this file would be saved if we then save it if that makes sense. So where this, what the directory this shell is reading from. 
So if we press start, we're going to show the graph like that. And then behind it, we can see that this is the location where this file is reading from. Like this is the location here. And cool. So now we can go to that location and we can utilize another function called save fig. So we type in plt.savefig. Then in brackets, we type in the name of the file we want to save it as, in this case, plotting underscore line, plotting underscore graph. And then let's type in part one, one. And then dot PDF and dot PDF is the extension. Remember to include the extension when you're doing this, put the both in quotation marks. And then what we can do we can get rid of this print OS check. We can even get rid of the importation of the module because you don't need it anymore. And we can then, instead of showing it, we can actually save it to that location where it's reading from. If we type in, let's just show you here first, there's nothing here and hopefully a PDF will appear when we next go to that place. So that is the location where the file is reading from. We can then type in plt.savefig, press start, let it run for a bit, press any key to continue, go to our location, notice that a PDF file has appeared. We can then click into our PDF file and we've now saved that graph as a PDF file. Cool. So that is how to create line graphs using only Python. Hopefully you found that really useful and helpful and a really great first step in learning how to use Python for your data needs and for your graphing needs. Cool. In the next part, we are going to go onto bar charts. I haven't yet decided whether I want to actually go onto bar charts or do a part two of line graphs. Comment below and I will listen to your comments. Um, but my plan is to go to bar charts, I think. Please do subscribe to my channel if you found that useful. We're only going to have more building building onto this and more on graphs. So if you like this tutorial, definitely do subscribe because you're only going to learn more and more and more. And I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Thanks very much for watching.